All right. So today we're going to be oiling work boots. We'll just be using leaf foot oil. And we're just going to be applying it with the toothbrush. So while I'll be oiling the boots, be going over some things for any up and coming welders and iron workers that I think might be helpful or interesting for y'all, either on stuff you should or shouldn't do in my opinion or good work ethic. But first, one of the reasons I oil my boots is because I like them to last longer. When you oil them, it stays nice and soft. If you don't oil them, they're gonna be, get hard and brittle and they're not gonna be waterproof as long. So, especially for welders, we have a lot of heat falling on our boots with all the spatter and all. And it's just gonna dry it out real quick like. So, I like to start with the threads on the sole, the leather connecting the sole. I like to start on that part so that it gets a lot of oil soaked in. We can always go back to that part. Sometimes I'll give it several coats. And I really like rubbing into all the threads. So since that's pretty much all there is to the oiling, I'll just be spitballing on things I think might help any of the new welders or iron workers out there, specifically the welders, because that's what I do. I am a welder. I'm also an iron worker. I'm a journeyman in both. So one thing for a lot of the welders out there, have some humility. I know you're a welder out there and it's really cool. You're higher than the other iron workers out there because they just connect beams, but don't act that way. It's not cool. You want to just be the good old person that everyone likes and you won't have trouble on the job site. I don't mean just bend over backwards for everyone. You know, just do the right thing and don't act too high and mighty. Just a little bit because you deserve it. You're a welder. So at the schools for welding, I went to a welding school and also taught at a welding school. So... I have plenty of experience on the kind of people that attend those schools. And in the beginning classing classes there, it's almost not a welding class, more of a special needs class. Yeah, people that think they're amazing welders because they welded in their backyard for the last few years working on the most piddly projects and they act like they're something special. Well, odds are you're not. It don't work like that. Just because you did a, a very poor job on some minor, minuscule project doesn't mean you'll be any good at putting buildings together. It might help. It depends if you did it right. All right, so for the oil here, I do oil my boots quite a bit so it gets dark nice and fast. If you don't oil your boots hardly at all and you start oiling them, it's going to dry up quick. It's going to go in there and you're going to put more and more coats on. So that's why I don't do too many coats. So back to the welding schools. When you're in there, again, just like if you're on a job site, don't act like you are the best at whatever you are. Even if you are the best in your class, just go there and weld. You're not there to be a superstar. Nobody cares. Nobody's going to ooh and ah. That's not how it works. Most of the time, the best welders that go to the welding school don't have to have any experience welding. Might not have ever picked up a rod or a welding gun ever. They're usually not right out of high school because high school kids are stupid and dumb. Most of the time. If you are a high school kid, just behave yourself and get all your work done in the classes. Some of the best students are folks that already have a full-time job, sometimes even with an extra part-time job, have been out in some field that they absolutely hate for the last 10 years and want to better themselves, veterans who are coming back and they want a good, good career, or folks coming out of the penitentiary. So if you're one of those groups, well, best of luck to you. Uh, one thing about the folks coming out of the penitentiary, If you share your story in the welding class when you have your little meet and greets, 
If you think that it's going to turn people away from you, it doesn't. Sometimes I respect people more that come out from serving time than the high school kids because more often than not, the folks that are coming out of prison and want to get a good job in welding, they're going to work harder than most people could imagine. Same with the veterans. I respect our veterans, and when they come out of the service and they want to get their welding certs, they do phenomenal. They don't know the word quit on that. They will put in all the effort. And the folks that have the full-time job already, well, they already have a full-time job. They're not going to come to school just to do nothing. High school kids, well, they're retarded, so... We don't really worry too much about those. They don't normally get too far. Anywho, when you're in the welding school, whatever the assignments the instructors give you, do them. Don't question them unless it's something unsafe. Don't be saying that you can do something better all the time, that you already know what you're doing because you were MIG welding for a year and that your best friend's cousin's uncle taught you because he's some master welder. He may have taught you something, but go through the welding classes. If the instructors, more often than not, see that you're doing phenomenal, they might bump you up a class. If they know that your skill level is above par for whatever class you're taking, they will take the appropriate actions. So don't go in charging that you know what you're doing and you're ready to take the certs tests and all. We've had students come in like that. They're ready to take the certs after six months because they want a $300,000 pipeline job. You will get laughed out of class. I know because I've laughed so many people out of class because it's, it's funny. It's so dumb to say that. You need years and years of training, unless you've already done on-the-job experience, and then you come in there, get a little extra training, you might be ready. Maybe. But put in the time of practice. Don't burn one rod every half hour. If you say that's how long it takes for your plate to cool, you're full of hogwash. We don't believe none of that brouhaha. So don't be lying to your instructors. We don't like that. If you do, eh, we'll pay less attention to you. We'll pay more attention to the folks that are putting all the effort. They might not be doing as well as you, but we respect them more. The more people that have the respect, the more attention they'll get from the instructors. I'm not saying we play favorites, but if you're just a retard in the class and you goof off and you don't do nothing, well, then why would we give you an attention you're not doing anything? I've had to kick students out of class because they're playing tag in the shop. No lie, I had high schoolers come in. They finished high school. They thought they were something special. And, yeah, they didn't get past the first semester. I've had kids try and blow up the welding department because they're purely stupid. Any other welding instructors out there, keep an eye on your oxyacetylene tanks especially on the high school kids. They will not believe anything you tell them about explosives. They will not believe that it can blow the shop sky high, because it will. So on the job site, any one that's going on job site, any new punk that's going to the job site from a welding school or any trade school, don't go in there saying that you know it all. You do not. There's no such thing as knowing it all. Even the best journeymen do not know it all. We are always learning. But if you are fresh out of high school and taking the apprenticeship program through a company or a union, or you're just coming out of a school and getting into the trade, you most certainly do not know as much as we do. So when we tell you something, don't be questioning every sentence that we say, especially the stuff about safety. When we say some things about safety, it's loud and harsh because it needs to be done immediately. We are not here to whisper safety concerns. If something is possibly very wrong, we are going to yell it at you. We would want the same done to us. We don't want you to see something and not say it. If a load is hanging by a thread for some reason or it's ready to slip, we don't want you to take your time to meander on over. You yell at that person to get out of the way. You yell at someone to do something. Don't just stand by and do nothing. That's not how things work. 
Another thing, you gotta be able to take some jokes. Whether you're at the welding school, which is not as popular in the welding schools anymore because of how schools react to sarcasm and jokes. But on the job site, you will get hazed. It doesn't matter what spot you're in, just about, you will get hazed. And if you don't take it very well, you will not be making very many friends. You gotta be able to take a joke, whether it's about you, something you do, your faith, your political beliefs. If you talk about that a lot on a job site, you will get hazed on anything. Even if it's stuff they already agree with, it's fun to haze people. Nothing dangerous, just teasing, maybe some practical jokes. But you can't be a crybaby about it. If you do, nobody's going to like you and nobody's going to want you back on that job. And we will find ways to make sure you don't come back. So... Don't go charging insane jokes either. Nobody likes the person that is the know-it-all on all the jokes. You gotta go through the motions, take the jokes, dish a little bit out, and the higher up you get, the more you can do it. You don't ever mouth off to a journeyman if you're an apprentice, more or less a first string apprentice. If you're in your sixth or eighth period, of being an apprentice, that's more acceptable. That we're fine with that. You're getting higher up. You're close to being a journeyman. We'd probably encourage that because it's fun because we have nothing else to do. But if you're a first period or second period apprentice, do not go in insulting all the journeymen. You will have some unfortunate comebacks, physical or otherwise, possibly. It happens. Now, When you're doing stuff on a job site, don't do it to be cool. Do it to be practical. If you're wearing something because you want to stand out, that will be the topic of the hazing. I know I've done it to other people because they just look completely stupid. And it's fun. We have nothing else to do sometimes on a job site, so we will make fun of you. And the harder you take it, sometimes the more I'll dish out because, you know, if you can't take it, I don't want you there. I want to be able to kid around with you in the downtime. If we're moving stuff, you got to be able to take a joke. Otherwise, it's no fun. But job sites aren't all about fun. You got to get your work done. If you are slow and you know that you take a lot of time to do things, welding and iron working might not be the trade for you. You got to be able to pick up the pace. You can't just be slow taking your time everything's on your schedule job sites need to get done there's millions or billions of dollars on the line on some of these things some of the projects you have to sign contracts you can't talk about them you gotta be on special sites to where nobody can see what you're doing you gotta have the pace fast you can't be taking your time so i'm just spitballing on things here i didn't have any real plans on what i was gonna say just Things I've had cooped up. So you are now my anger management class on all the stuff I have had building up on me for, you know, the dumb kids that get into the welding schools and stuff. Because if I say anything at the school, then I get in trouble and I don't like losing jobs that way. It's just like having good contacts. Anywho's, some folks say, well, you can't get anything good wise in the job. If you're a welder, you're just going to work in some sweatshop. You're going to make minimum wage, if that. And there are places that pay less than minimum wage. Don't mistake that. But I can guarantee you can make more than you can make with a bachelor's degree. Especially if you have a degree in underwater welding. I mean, um, basket weaving. Underwater welding. The next classroom over, the fun class. You can make bank. That you can make $300,000 a year. You get to travel the world and get to see all kinds of new things, experience new things. I don't do that because, yeah, I'm good. I don't like sharks. So y'all can have that. I don't, I don't need nothing to do with that. And another thing, they say, well, if sharks are your only concern, then you're just scared cat. No, when you go down that many times and you do that for a living, the oxygen that is compressed, that is piped down to you, 
it will form nitrogen bubbles in your bloodstream. And those little bubbles will get to your bones. And the reason a lot of places you can't weld past the age of 35 or 40, because if you fall down at the age of 35 or 40 and you've been doing underwater welding for 20 years, you will break your hip. It just weakens your bones. And the only thing you can do with all that money you made is go to a very nice old folks home. Not exactly true, but it's close enough. So that's why I don't do that kind of stuff. Plus there's sharks, so yeah, no, thank you. But if you put in several years at a welding school and several years in an apprenticeship for pipe welding, you can make $300,000, no problem, if you're good. You can't just fly through the program not knowing what you're doing, you're gonna make that. I've had students come in beginning semester of the welding class in the welding school first class they come well i'm not going to even finish the semester i'm just going to learn how to weld and i'm going to go make three hundred thousand dollars on the pipeline i could not contain my laughter because that that's just so hokey it was so ridiculous of them to say they had no clue what it actually took and they quit because it was too tough on them that's fine by me i got tired of dealing with them I've had students quit because they had to sweat, which was apparently something they never thought that wellers do, even though you're welcome, working in 120 degree heat with several thousand degree flame in front of your face. But you know, different strokes for different folks. They must not have figured that one out. I've had students quit on the absolute dumbest of reasons. One got the smallest little burn and just yeet a bit a little piece of spatter fell on their arm. And they left their stuff in their welding booth and they quit. So if you can't handle getting burnt, getting a toe crushed once in a while, getting cut, scrapes, and stuff like that, you should not be a welder. But you will make decent amount of acquaintances in the welding school. And I would recommend if you enjoy hanging around some of those people and you like the work ethic stuff, get their phone numbers when you're in welding school. If you enjoy hanging out with them, I don't mean like best buddy sort of things, but they're good people. If you can identify good people when you see good people, you get their phone numbers. If you start your own business, give them a call. They're good folks. Or if they really like you and they know your work ethic and your welding skills, a year down the line, 10 years down the line, they might give you a call and say, hey, I got a job that needs another welder. And I remember we were really cool back in welding school. I've given out those calls and I've received those calls. So you want to have good contacts. Doesn't mean you'd be nice just to get the contacts. Otherwise, you're just scum and nobody likes you. And for some of those folks that have a parent that might own a company that is in the welding or ironworking trade, and you work there, rule of thumb, work harder than anyone else there. If you don't, and you just louse around all day, just whoop de doo don't really care, and you get paid, everyone's gonna hate you. Nobody likes those folks. I've worked for companies like that, where they're either fellow apprentice, or even a supervisor was the son of the company, and just, absolute retard didn't know what he was doing didn't know anything about what he was telling us to do and nobody liked him then people lost respect for the company because you don't do that so so for the boots i like to put extra on the toe of the boot because i have a lot of spatter falling there and I like to have that extra protected. So it's pretty well oiled up. I'm just gonna let it sit there. I usually let it sit for a few hours before using it. Otherwise, I'll get oil all over everything. And that's no fun to deal with because you'll be slipping and sliding all over. At least these soles are oil resistant. So if you do get some oil on there, they will resist the oil because these are thorough good boots. Love these things. They've lasted quite a while. Probably getting me a new pair of boots soon. Yeah, if you're getting in the trades, always 
be learning. Never think that you know everything. Nobody likes the know-it-all. If you are the know-it-all, you'll probably run off a job site, get a, oh, we're sorry, but we don't need your services, and they'll go find someone that they will respect as a worker. Doesn't mean we're not gonna give you a hard time as the next person, but we wanna be able to respect what you're doing. Just because you're hazed as an apprentice or a lower ranked journeyman doesn't mean that there's no respect. If you come to work, come to work. Don't come to work a half hour late. Don't be given excuses. If there's something wrong while you got there late, tell them like, hey, this is what it was. Let it be at that. Don't be coming up with all kinds of things. For me, I always get the job sites early. I've never been late to a job site and I've never been late to a college class. I was always there early. And I've had events pop up that I almost was late, but I'm always there a half hour, hour early. If you're at a welding school, what do you think you can do a half hour, hour early? You can freaking study. Don't be sitting there playing games on your phone. I've had students turn in their homework. Oh, I forgot about this, or I had a lot of things pop up. Well, I saw you sitting outside playing on your phone. You could have at least done something. Now, if you're in a welding school, I've had this uh, happen to students, and as their instructor, I would encourage them to come up to me. I don't want to know all your issues. I'm not here to be your therapist, but if there's something wrong, if there's a family issue, whether someone passing the family, or you're having a lot of the issues arguing and it's really wearing you down, just tell me, hey, I got some issues going on at home. Sorry I didn't get this done. It'll be done next time. That's all I need to know. Other instructors, most of them, if you just tell them that, they will understand. You may be docked down for your grade, but if it were me, I let some things pass once in a while. If you got something serious going on, someone passes, you got some mega arguments with your girlfriend, your wife, or some females in the classes, boyfriend, husband, whatever, or your folks, I understand that. That can be very taxing, and it will wear down your, your homework. I understand that. Just get it done next time. Don't let it happen again and again and again. Again, I don't want to know all the details. I don't know what you're arguing about. I don't need to know that. That's not my job. My job is to make sure that you are safe in the class, and that you have all the material provided for you that you can pass it and that you can become a good welder. Beyond that, that nothing else is really my job. I don't need to hold your hand through life. I'm not your, your counselor or anything. I've had students that have come up for advice and I will give it out, but that's not my job. So if you're going to a, a class or you're going up to your journeyman and tell them all your problems, we don't need to know all that. That's not our job. We will sit there and listen if we respect you and it's not an everyday thing. We can do that. But don't do it every day. We don't, we don't need to sit there and hear your issues and hear you be a crybaby about every little thing and why your mom didn't fold your laundry. I swear I've heard that. Anywho, if you're going somewhere whether it's a welding school or a job site, make sure you have good transportation. A lot of welding job sites, that is a requirement. You can't be dropped off by your uncle, by your mama, by your brother, and not knowing who's going to be there the next day. If your family member, friend, whoever, is going to drop you off every single day, that's reliable transportation. Or if you take the bus, whatever. It has to be reliable. It has to be every single day for work. I had a student show up to a welding class an hour and a half late. I had already kicked him out of the class and put a new student that wasn't enrolled in his spot because that's how it works. You don't show up within the first 15 minutes, you're out, first day of class. He shows up, but it wasn't him who knocked on the door. It was his mother. And she was saying how she was going to make sure he was going to be there every single class because she was going to get him there on time and that she would make sure he was dressed for it. Mind you, this guy was in his 20s. Just hearing that, I couldn't keep a straight face. My supervisor couldn't keep one either because we were, we were ready to laugh the lady out. If you are like that, don't even bother signing up for class and don't ever sign up for one of those jobs. You will not make it. We want people that are dedicated to come to school. We want people that are 
with their good work ethic coming to work. We want people that want to work. We don't want people that come, yeah, I have to work because I want this new iPhone or I want this new pair of stupid Nike sneakers. We want you coming to work because you want to better your life. And we want you coming to work because you're going to put in the effort. If you don't put in the effort and we do, you're not going to have a good experience. We will make sure of that. So put in your time of school, put in your time of learning what the journeyman's doing. If a journeyman don't speak to you because you're an apprentice, well, that's his loss. He could have had a better apprentice. Go to the journeyman that will talk to you, that you can ask good questions to. Don't ask stupid questions. Don't ask the same question every day for two months straight. That gets old, and we will make fun of you. If you don't get something, just say, hey, I'm sorry. I'm not understanding this. I know you've explained it five times this week, but this process, I'm not understanding. Can you possibly try and explain it a different way? Can you draw it out for me? Can you do something a little bit different? I'm just not understanding it. More often than not, a journeyman will be more than happy to do that for you. That's what we're there for. We're not here to keep you in the dark. Yes, you might have your school that you go to or your apprenticeship program, but you're also supposed to learn on the job site. Even if you don't have either of those, you're supposed to learn on the job site. Whether well, it's reading blueprints, how to weld, mind you on a non-structural piece if you don't know how to weld at that point, you don't have your certs, or how to put something together, how to fabricate anything. We will try to help you as much as we can. We will not spend all day holding your hand. We will do whatever we can though to try and help you. So make sure to ask your journeyman, your supervisors, ask them questions. Even if it's not something that you're supposed to do, learn about different processes. If it's something that you wanna get into or you're curious about, Make sure you do that. We want people that are wanting to learn, that are wanting to work. That will get you very far. That work ethic will follow you. You might not know it, but people will remember that. I remember my best apprentices, and I remember my best students. I might not have their phone numbers. I might not remember all their names, but if I see them, I will know who they are by what they did. Also, the same goes for the opposite. If you're just a jerk, we remember who you are and what you did. So... Everything you do on the job site gets remembered. You might not think so because you're just an apprentice. You're just slipping from one job site to the other. But you will be remembered by the things you do. Make sure you do everything to the best of your ability. Make sure you do them safe. Because if you don't do them safe, nobody's going to want you there. We all want to go home safe to the end of the day. Uh, other than that, last thing probably, if you get to a job site and you say, wow, it's early and it's 9 a.m., you're going to get laughed out. I don't think there's been a single job I've gotten to later than seven, and that's because of sound ordinance. That's probably six. The job starts at seven, but I'd start prepping at six on the job site. More often than not, we're there at three or four in the morning. Don't be saying how early it is. Everybody's got to get up at that time. More often than not, you're getting up oh, around 1.30 to 2.30 to get to the job site. Get your lunch all made, get your gear all packed, get into the correct job site, not get into the one that you went to last week because you're that tired, been there, done that. Uh, yeah, drive to the correct job site for that week. Get there before you're supposed to be there. Don't be getting there on time because you're still going to be rushing. Never get there late. And don't complain that it's dark out. Nobody wants to hear that. Yeah, some things are more difficult. It's nice and cool out. If you're a welder... It's nice and cool out. You don't want to be welding in the middle of summer out in the desert. It's hot. Nobody wants to do that. Get there at 3 in the morning, start working, and if you got a good 12 hours in, you're off by 3, you get to go home and shower. You don't want to be there getting off at dark because you'll have all that sweat from all the hot hours of the day. And, yeah, sometimes the evening hours are the worst. So don't complain about things unless it's safety. Other than that, just behave yourselves on the job site. Don't be playing tag at the schools. Don't be playing tag on the job site. Don't act like a kid. Show respect to the journeyman. I don't mean you have to bow in front of them. I mean, you're an apprentice, so you should probably curtsy. That's that's what you are, just curtsy. Um, yeah, show respect to anyone that's above you. Even if it's an apprentice lower than you, Show them basic respect. Doesn't mean you have to step out of their way, because if you're higher up, they have to step out of your way. That's how things work on the job site. 
just show them respect as a person. Don't be playing that game, well, I'm a second period apprentice and you're a first string apprentice. You don't mean anything. Nobody likes that. It might be funny for a joke, but don't do that for real. It, it's not cool. Now, if you don't get out of my way because I'm a journeyman and you're a first string apprentice, I will holler at you. It will be fun the first time, but if you just stand in the middle of the way, I will yell at you and I will be serious about it. Respect the journeyman, especially if you're an iron worker and there's a welder iron worker, those have higher rank. They get paid more. If you don't like that, too bad. I don't care. That's how it works. You get paid more, get your certs. And iron that. Looks like the boots sucked in the wall pretty good. I keep them pretty well maintained. They will last you a long time. Take care of your equipment. Take care of yourselves. Behave yourselves, I guess. I don't know how to end that. So stay safe on the job site. And always keep learning. All right. See you all in the next video.